Good day, my name is uh, Dr. Scott Peters, and I am an assistant professor at Texas A&M University San Antonio in the Department of Counseling. And what I'd like to do today is give you a short overview of acceptance and commitment therapy, otherwise known as ACT. Uh, it was, uh, it's a theoretical approach that was developed by Stephen Hayes, a clinical psychologist out of the University of Nevada at Reno uh, in 1984. Dr. Hayes developed this approach which combines aspects of cognitive behavioral, existentialism, and also even some uh, mindfulness-based approaches as well as Buddhist uh, teachings. So it is truly what we would call an eclectic approach. Uh, it's a marvelous approach that aims to help people understand the private events that they have and the efforts that they exert to try to avoid or to suppress those events actually increases the event and increases the distress that's accompanying the event. And I'd like to give you a couple of examples. Um, and then as they move through ACT, then once they can address these events, learn to accept them and then commit to valued goals. And we'll talk in a minute about valued goals. So let me talk to you about two specific events. First is anxiety. Anxiety is what uh, Dr. Hayes really developed this for, along with depression. It's been extended to those with psychotic disorders. Uh, what he did is he looked at anxiety, and all of us can appreciate anxiety. It's a fairly universal uh, uh, concern. Some people have it more, some people have it less. But what he found is that people get anxious the more they try not to be anxious, the more anxious they become. And oftentimes, the more anxious they become, uh, the more difficult it comes to get, becomes to get rid of it. So one of the things that ACT does is it uses the meta a metaphor, and a lot of metaphors. So let me give you a quick metaphor about anxiety. Let's suppose that you have anxiety and you come to see me and I am going to, I'm your therapist, and I'm a very good therapist and very ethical, but what I'm going to do is hook you up to a lie detector. And what I'm going to tell you is I want you not to be anxious. Just relax. But this lie detector is meant to pick up any bit of anxiety. So I'm really going to help you not to be anxious. And I'm so sure you cannot be anxious that I'm going to put a gun to your head. I have to tell you, if you get the least bit anxious, I'm going to shoot you in the head. I know you're thinking to yourself, what kind of therapist is this? But there's something behind this. Now, the more you're going to try to stay calm, the more difficult it's going to be to remain calm. The more difficult it's going to be to remain calm, the more anxious you're going to get. So that is one of the clear analogies that we use in ACT. The more you try to avoid it, the more it comes back. Another example is working with individuals with psychotic symptoms. Hearing voices is a central, theme, a central symptom of schizophrenia, specifically paranoid type. What happens is people who have schizophrenia and paranoid type hear voices. They usually hear or in the back of their head or somewhere out here. What happens is they try to avoid the voices. They'll use efforts like covering their ears, talking louder to drown out the voices, uh, even to use substances. What we learned through our work and to, and to help them understand is that let go of the voices. The voices are part of you. It would be the same if you have a high blood pressure. You're going to treat it, but you still have it. You may treat diabetes with insulin or a pump even or medication or diet, but you still have diabetes. So goes with schizophrenia, paranoid type. You are going to hear voices. The more you try to avoid them, the more they come to rule your life. So what we help people understand with schizophrenia is to listen to the voice, accept that the term that's used is a private event. Accept that private event as just being that, and then move forward. Does that mean you're not going to hear the voice? No. You're still probably going to hear the voice, but if you are spending so much energy avoiding the voice, trying to uh, cope with the voice, 
the more time you are exerting that would be better spent in other areas of your life. So we help clients in the second part of commitment is to commit to valued goals. Now value goals are certainly individual. Some of us, our value goals may be uh, simply to garden more. Other individuals, it's to get an education. Other individuals, it's to spend time with our family. Other people, it's uh, going for a walk. So what we try to move people from is this being stuck and perseverating on avoiding these voices, which consequently, like I said before, brings them more intense, brings them on in a more intense fashion. Um, and then help them look at these valued goals. And what happens is, and this is the ex existential part of it, and it's a wonderful central aspect of ACT, is this is what you have. Uh, Mike, 42-year-old male with schizophrenia paranoid type. Mike, if you're spending time avoiding these voices or drinking <clears throat> or yelling or being constantly or chronically re-hospitalized, where they're going to give you medication, what else are you missing out of life? <clears throat> Existentialism <clears throat> comes from the central tenant that this is your life. What do you want to do with it? You only have this much time. How much do you want to spend? Real quick word about psych uh, antipsychotics. The atypical antipsychotics that are used nowadays are typically Zyprexa, Respiridol, Seroquel, and Geodon. The research has suggested that it's only effective uh, anywhere from 47 to 50% of the time. That means, think of yourself, if you had headache, a bad headache, and we give you an aspirin, and we said you had only 50% of the time it's going to work, eh, that doesn't make you feel very well. Uh, in addition, the medication is extremely expensive. Uh, and it's only, like I said, only 47 to 50% effective if it's taken. Uh, People with schizophrenia paranoid type are notorious for ne being non-compliant. Non-compliant because they can't afford it. Non-compliant because they try to stretch it out. A 30-day supply, they may stretch out to 60 or 90 days because they can't afford it. Uh, and they don't like the side effects. The side effects are a lot less than they were for other medications, but uh, some of them clients simply don't like, so they won't take it. And then, of course, if they can self-medicate, that's another way they'll, they'll address it. So uh, we want to get people to understand that you have schizophrenia or you have anxiety. Uh, what we do find, again, as we move them from learning to just listen to the voices but move on, just notice them. Notice is a, is a wonderful term in acceptance and act. Is you don't really listen to them, you notice them. They're there. You know, mo most of us, notice a pothole, what we do is we simply slow down and go over it. We can try to avoid it, but if we try to avoid it, oncoming traffic, uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, we spill our coffee. But what we try to do is get them, go over the whole slow. It's there, go over it. And then you move on with your life. But if you spend time trying to avoid that same pothole, you're, you're expending a lot of energy that you can do other things with. Uh, and so once we get them to move into these valued goals, what we necessarily find is that they become more focused on those goals. They have better outcomes. They tend to have less hospitalizations. They tend to need medication less, which means they have a little bit more money in their pocket. Because again, a lot of these individuals, uh, there is a gap in uh, uh, pharmaceutical reimbursement. And that's just a function of our society. But, uh, and then going back to people with anxiety, what we found is that the people get anxious. What happens is your brain tells your adrenal glands to spill out more because something's going to happen. But if we can get people to relax and avoid and, and just notice it, what happens is their brain will stop telling their kidneys to spill out adrenaline because there's nothing to worry about. So ACT is very effective with anxiety as well. It helps people um, notice it, notice my anxiety, you know butterflies in your stomach, just notice it. So thank you very much. Uh, that was a quick overview of ACT. Uh, come and visit our campus sometime. Bye-bye.